let's all stand together and honor the reading of God's word. The Bible says in the book of Psalms 135, verses 1 through 7, Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise him, O you servants of the Lord, you who stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God. Praise the Lord. For the Lord is good. Sing praises to his name, for it is pleasant. For the Lord has chosen Jacob for himself, Israel for his special treasure. For I know that the Lord is great, and our Lord is above all gods. Whatever the Lord pleases, he does in heaven and in earth, in the seas and in all the deep places. He causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He makes lightning from uh, for the rain. He brings the wind out of his treasuries. You may be seated. Father, we thank you so much for this time that you've allowed us to come in and celebrate in worship. We thank you for the goodness of our God, the greatness of the Lord God we worship. We thank you for people of faith who've gathered today to hear a word from you and a word from your uh, word. So I pray that you'll speak to our heart. Help us, Father, to have an understanding of the passage that is before us, how to present it, so that people will hear it. They will understand it, receive it, and incorporate it into their daily living. And I want to pray for anybody that might be here today. They've never asked you to be their Savior. I pray that in this service, the Holy Spirit will be powerful, convicting, and convincing, and they will surrender their life to you. I ask this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Psalms 135 is, to believe, is believed to have been written by uh, King Hezekiah. Many believe it was written by him. And when we begin to study uh, the life of this king, there's an interesting things about him, or as a matter of fact, there's a lot of interesting things about King Hezekiah. He is described as one of the best kings who ever sat upon the throne of Judah, and he is distinguished as the greatest in faith of all of Judah's kings. If you care to read just a little bit about him, you can find some things about him in the book of 2 Kings, beginning in chapter number 18, in verses 3 through 5, where it says, speaking of King Hezekiah, and he did what was right in the sight of the Lord according to all that his father David had done. He removed the high places and he broke the sacred pillars, cut down the wooden images and broke in pieces the bronze serpent that Moses had made. For until those days, the children of Israel, they burned incense to it and they called it Nehushtan. He trusted in the Lord uh, God of Israel so that after him was none like him among all the kings of Judah, nor who were before him. King Hezekiah became king uh, at the age of 25. And he became, uh, and, and because of his strong commitment to God and his clear uh, stand against the evils of idolatry, there was revival that took place in the land with people turning to God and turning away from idols. And one of the reasons for King Hezekiah's success was he received encouragement from the prophet Isaiah. The prophet Isaiah was both his friend and uh, his counselor. It is said of the prophet Isaiah uh, that he was the noblest and most eloquent of the Hebrew prophets who knew how to carry his religion into his politics. If Hezekiah is indeed the author uh, first, uh, of Psalms chapter 135, he, uh, it may have been written to give thanks to God. It might have been a time of praise in his personal life for what God had done for him. And there's at least two occasions where God worked mightily in the life of the king that he might have been pausing to give God thanks for. First of all, God had delivered King Hezekiah and all of his people from the wicked king of Assyria. Hezekiah had taken notice that the king of Assyria had destroyed and taken captive uh, their neighbors, the northern kingdom of Israel. And he was now being threatened by this wicked king that he and his people would be next. And so Hezekiah, he sent messengers to the prophet Isaiah and he says, please pray. And after he requested the prophet Isaiah to pray, Hezekiah himself 
went up into the house of God and he got on his face before God and he cried out to God. We can read about it in 2 Kings chapter number 19 and verse number 9. It says, Now therefore, O Lord our God, I pray, save us from his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you are the Lord God, you alone. Listen to the message God sends back to Hezekiah in regard to the king of Assyria's mocking and threats. In the book of 2 Kings chapter number 19, verse 32, it says, Therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, he shall not come into this city, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come in it with shield, nor build a siege mount against it. By the way that he came in, by the same way he will return. And he shall not come into the city, says the Lord, for I will defend this city to save it for my own sake, and for my servant David's sake. Did God defend the city? Yes, he did. And it's interesting when we read in the Bible how God defended the city from this wicked Assyrian king. The Bible says in the book of 2 Kings chapter number 19, in verse 35 and 36, And it came to pass on a certain night that the angel of the Lord went out, and he killed in the camp of the Assyrians 185,000. And when the people arose early in the morning, there were corpses all dead. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, he departed and he went away. He returned home and he remained at Nineveh. Later on, when while Sennacherib, king of Assyria, was worshiping in the temple of Nishrat, his two sons came in and they struck him. They killed him. They took his life. When faced with military dangers, Hezekiah prayed. But there's another occasion where Hezekiah saw the deliverance of God that might have caused him to give thanks to God. There was a time when Hezekiah was sick and he was facing death. But just like when he was threatened militarily by this Assyrian king, Hezekiah turned to God in prayer. Notice what it says in the book of 2 Kings chapter number 20 in verses 1 through 6. It says, in those days, Hezekiah was sick and near death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Ahamas, went to him and said to him, Thus saith the Lord, set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. Then he turned his face toward the wall and prayed to the Lord, saying, Remember now, O Lord, I pray, how I walk before you in truth and with a loyal heart and have done what was good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. And it happened before Isaiah had gone out into the middle of the court that the word of the Lord came to him saying, Return and tell Hezekiah, the leader of my people, thus says the Lord, the God of David, your father, I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. Surely I will heal you. On the third day you shall go up to the house of the Lord, and I will add to your days 15 years. I will deliver you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city for my own sake and for the sake of my servants uh, for my servant David, Hezekiah's deliverance from military dangers and physical illness would have been a great cause, a reason to recognize God's blessings and to give him thanks. Wouldn't you agree? Hezekiah had every reason to praise God. He had every reason to give God thanks. Whether or not Hezekiah is the author of Psalms 135, it is clear that whoever is the author, they recognize what a blessing it is to belong. They recognize what a blessing it is to belong to God. And you see, when we think about it today, we're gathered here today in this church because we recognize what a blessing it is to belong. It's a blessing to belong to God. 
It's a blessing to belong to his church. It's a blessing to, lo to belong to a family, all of what you are a part of. You'll be gathering on Thanksgiving Day with your family, and you'll be thinking about the blessings of belonging to family. But what about the blessing of belonging to a free America? Oh, I want to tell you something. We have a lot to praise God for. We have so much to be thankful for, but are we telling God how much we love him? Are we expressing to him the kind of thanksgiving that he deserves? Whoever the writer was of Psalms 135, they knew how to tell God. They appreciated what God was doing for them. Again, notice Psalms 135, verses 1 through 3. The writer says, praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise him, O you servants of the Lord. You who stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God, praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praises to his name, for it is pleasant. When we look at these three verses, I want to call your attention to something. The servants who stood in the house of the Lord, they are the priests and the Levites. They took care of all of the businesses around the temple. And those who stand in the courts of the house of the Lord, they are the people. And when we see this passage in its context, all of them had come together to worship God and to give him praise and to give him thanks. They recognize what a great blessing it is to belong to God. I want you to think about that today. Your personal relationship with God because of your faith in his son, Jesus Christ. It has brought you into that wonderful family of belonging to God. And the psalmist had this in mind when he wrote Psalms 95, verses 6 and 7. He says, oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Did you see how personally he is? For he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. The people that gather just like we to praise the Lord, to worship him, to give him thanks. And they were to praise the Lord and they were to praise the Lord, uh, praise the name of the Lord. They were just not there thinking about God, but they were thinking about how they knew so much about God because of the name of God. One writer said this, and I quote, Jehovah is the God of covenant, the God of promise, the God who keeps his word, the God who is forever all that his people need. Throughout scripture, salvation in all its aspects is closely linked with the name of the Lord. That saving, sanctifying, sovereign name Jehovah in the Old Testament and of Jesus in the New Testament. When I went, read the words of the writer, I was reminded of what Luke writes in the book of Acts. In regard to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the book of Acts, in chapter number 4, in verse number 12, it says, Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name uh, under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. What is that name? It is the name of Jesus. It is the name of salvation. It is the name of forgiveness. You see, it's a wonderful blessing to belong to God and a blessing which we should all be thankful for. When is the last time you thought about it and, and uh, about how blessed you are to belong to God? We take so many blessings for granted, don't we? And the fact that we are in, we are God's people, forgiven of our sins through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. What a great blessing. If you'll notice in Psalms chapter 135 and verses 3 and 4, the psalmist writes about the, the goodness of God. He says, praise the Lord for the Lord is good. Sing praises to his name for it is 
blessing. For the Lord has chosen Jacob for himself, Israel for his special treasure. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 26, in verses number 18 and 19, as well as many other passages throughout the scripture, we are told about how God chose Israel as his chosen people, that special treasure that the psalmist writes about. Deuteronomy 26, 18, it says, speaking of Israel, also today the Lord has proclaimed you to be his special people. Just as he has promised you that you should keep all his commandments and that he will set you above, high above all the nations which he has made in praise, in name, in honor, and that you may be a holy people to the Lord your God, just as he has spoken. It's a great blessing to belong to Jehovah God, who is described in Scripture as good. Would that be your testimony of the Lord? If you were to be able to stand today in this place and speak about God, what would you say? Would you be able to say that he is good? I love what the psalmist says in chapter number 25, verse number 8. He says, good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he teaches sinners in the way. Thank God. It says in the book of Psalms 34, 8, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. In the book of Psalms, chapter number 86, verse number 5, it says, For you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive and abundant in mercy to all those who call upon you. In the book of Psalms 100, verse number 5, it says, For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generation. Whoever it was writing Psalms 135, they recognized how good it was to belong. They recognized all of the blessings that comes from belonging to holy God. And they gave him praise. They gave him thanksgiving for it. And the psalmist not only wrote about the goodness of God, but also the psalmist writes about the greatness of God. In the book of Psalms, chapter 135, in verse 5 through 7, he says, For I know that the Lord is great. God is good, and God is great. Do, do, you, do you recognize him for that? Do you give him thanks for that? It says, And our Lord is above all gods. Whatever the Lord pleases, he does in heaven and in earth, in the seas and the, and the deep places. He causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He makes lightnings for the rain. He brings the wind out of his treasuries. How great really is God? How great is our God? Well, the psalmist, he tells us in Psalms 147, verse number 5, he says, great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding is infinite. You, you see, it does us good to study the Bible and get to know who God is and what God is like. The psalmist says God is good. The psalmist says God is great. But notice in Psalms 145, verse number 3, it says, Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. In the book of Psalms, in chapter 104, and verse number 1, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, O Lord my God. You are clothed with honor and majesty. And then the psalmist writes in Psalms 86:10. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Is that the way you approach God? In your quiet time? In your prayer? Recognizing that he is good? Recognizing that he is great? You see, Thanksgiving is a time to remember the blessings of belonging. Nick Saban is probably one of the all-time greatest 
coaches of our time. He is the coach of the Alabama Crimson Tide. He has won seven national championships, nine Southeastern Conference championships, many, many Coach of the Year awards. His overall record as college coach is 261, 65 and one in probably counting. His record at Alabama is 170 and 23. Recently, July the 20th, Coach Saban was the keynote speaker of the 89th annual Texas High School Coaches Association Convention. And listen to what he said. He said, and I quote, I played second base in Little League when I was nine years old. I've been a part of a team since I was nine years old. That's 60 years I've been a part of a team. I'm scared to death of when I'm not going to be a part of a team. You see, people play sports because they have a desire to experience the blessings of belonging. People get married because they have a desire to experience the blessings of belonging. But listen, people come to Jesus Christ for salvation and forgiveness because they want to experience the blessings of belonging. And people join a church and they attend a church because they want to experience the blessings of belonging. And you see, the good news is people of faith, they never have to fear not belonging. No matter the circumstance that, that come our way, we belong to God, and that is forever. It is a blessing to belong. This Thursday, and a lot of you already probably made preparations, but this Thursday is Thanksgiving, and many of us will gather around the table with family and friends and with anybody that wants to come. And we might not say it out loud, but we're going to feel it in our heart. We're going to feel it in our heart. It is a blessing to belong. That's what family's about. That's what it's about, being in God's family and being in his church and being part of a fellowship. It's a blessing to belong to God. It's a blessing to belong to Jesus. It's a blessing to belong to a family as you celebrate on Thanksgiving. And it's a blessing to belong in a free America. Here's what's, here's what's so important to remember. We may praise God for what he has done. But we ultimately worship God for who he is. And that's why all of that that the psalmist writes is so important. It tells us about who God is. But we today have a tough time understanding and comprehending the awesomeness and the greatness of God. But the psalmist tells us about it. Now, if you don't belong to God through faith in his son, Jesus Christ, then you need to know you can belong. And it even gets better. God wants you to belong. He wants you in his forever family. I want to ask you, will you come today and accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior if you've never done so? He's waiting to receive you. He's waiting to forgive you. And he's waiting to welcome you into his family so that you can truly know the blessings of belonging. I want you to invite you to come right now, to come today. The goodness of God and the greatness of God made the psalmist thankful for the blessings of belonging. Let's pray together. Father, we give you praise. We thank you. We honor you. We realize how good you are, how great you are. And it humbles us to know that you love us. 
I want to pray for those that might be in this service today. They've never accepted you as their personal Savior. I want to pray that you'll give them courage. I pray that the Holy Spirit will be in their heart and soul to convict them of their need. And without fear, I pray that they'll walk the aisle today. I ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand together.